Hello, this is a review of the Lenovo ThinkPad 12.7mm SATA Hard Drive Bay Adapter 3, specifically the 12.7mm size that fits snugly perfectly in the sides of the newer Lenovo units, uh, such as the model W520, so that it fits. Um, the other bay, uh, there's a 9mm bay out there that supposedly works fine, except it leaves a 3mm gap. And as you can see here, it perfectly fits flush uh, without leaving any gaps at all, uh, for the most part here. Although it says hard drive bay, you can actually put any disk drive in here that's a SATA drive. Um, that's a hard disk drive or a solid state drive. Now if you get a genuine official Lenovo part, it should come in a box that looks exactly like this. And when you open it up, it has pretty bare bones information inside. So you first start off with two pieces of information. Um, the first is they'll tell you right away which model numbers this 12.7 millimeter bay is designed for. So if you have a, like a W520, you'll know that yours is perhaps like a 4282. Um, it's just the machine type that's listed on the back of your laptop. So confirm, at least as current as of this paper notice was printed. They give you instructions, which most of the content is just it repeated in different languages, but they're really barely useful. Like the instructions, all you're going to look at is the pictures. The text really isn't enlightening at all. Um, here you'll it'll say basically lift a lever, flip something back, um, slide your drive in, push the cover back, push the cover back down, and then put the lever back down. And that's pretty much all it says. So this is pretty useless as far as installation instructions other than if you weren't sure where to lift the lever from. And then inside you'll find the unit in a bag like this. So this is what it is. And here are your SATA connections on the back. It basically just pushes into a slot that has SATA cables that whether your optical drive was in its place or this unit will be able to take its place. Now to install your drive, there's basically you press a little button here and it lifts this whole lever right on up. And then there's this little sheet like thing. Basically just lift your sheet right back and then inside here is where you can put your extra hard drive or solid disk drive. And there's going to be one really important thing to note here. So notice these rubber rails. Uh, this is something that all the Lenovo drives always use, and it uses it as a buffer. So notice that the drive doesn't sit completely flush against the bottom of the case. Um, so you'll n remember from the inside of your normal hard drive compartment, if you've ever opened it, is all of their drives have rails on them. And this bay adapter relies on having those rails for a little bit more spacing. Now it, it doesn't make it flush against the top, the two sides completely. It's more about spacing to hold it at the right distance. Now I've read some reviews where people online seem to just stick a drive in here and it just still works just fine and it might wiggle itself free if you don't have this. So this gives you some friction and honestly when you put this in and ratchet the bar down this clamps against here a little bit more and it really holds the drive in place. I believe this also offers some other benefits that reduce vibrations. Um, now the, the disc, or the bay does not come with the rails. So you can order them separately, although it's really not clear which is the rail part number that you need to order. Uh, you're best off hoping that somebody has an old laptop around that has these. Now these are standard as far as I can tell, at least for most of these hard, um, hard drives or solid state drives. Um, I just found at work someone had an extra bag of these around the IT department from old Lenovo laptops and bad hard drives that it went bad. So um, you, you do need to get a pair of these rails and slap them on. Uh, but otherwise, I think it'll work without it. But there are other bay adapters out there that will work without rails. Um, and then I've also read that some people have reported that maybe without these rails that give a little bit of vibration buffer, people said with a hard disk drive that had spinning platters that they felt vibrations where the whole laptop would vibrate a bit more. Now, of course, the solid state has no moving parts, so that wouldn't necessarily be a problem. But I believe these rubber things offer two things. One is a non-slip grip to help lock it into place when you put the bar down and two is it's probably just a little extra buffer to help prevent vibrations. It's really easy to slide the drive on in. Um, it slides it right on out. Now I don't have one of those pull tabs but it's going to be easy enough to pull this out if I need to. Um, so, uh, but basically you just slide it on in. It doesn't click or lock into place at all. Just make sure it's pushed as well as it can. 
then you put this flat back down, put that back down, lock it into place, and then we'll slide it into the computer. To install it, you're going to need to remove whatever you had in the existing bay, such as an optical disk drive. You do that by pushing this lever here. Now make sure that you don't have a screw in there, otherwise you won't be able to push this lever. So you, you with one hand, you push this lever, and meanwhile with the other hand, you're going to push firmly forward on here. And yes, it will eventually move forward, but you're going to push it at first, and it'll feel like the thing is not going to move. So make sure you're holding this with one hand and push firmly with your finger with this other hand. And trust me, eventually it'll budge out. Um, it's going to use a nub like this, I believe, to kick to help you. You're basically just going to be pushing directly against that, and eventually you'll get it out. So maybe flip over and use a nail if you're not getting some good traction and, and push firmly forward. Okay, and now it's released, so let's go ahead and slide out the optical disk drive. Set that safely to the side, and go ahead and take this. Now, orient it so that the bevel side is up um, to match the beveled side on your computer. So we'll see that the slide is now open, and I'm just going to go ahead and slide it on in carefully. Now, the rubber pads will cause it to stick a little bit more than the optical disk drive, but careful and it'll go in and you'll see that it clicks right on into place. And there we go. Um, it's now installed. Alright, and now it's installed and from a drive bay perspective it just works. I've plugged it in. It is a functioning working extra drive bay at this point in time. Now if I want proof of that I can start my computer and press the F1 key to get to the BIOS and then I'll be able to see clearly that it recognizes my hard disk drive. Now it should already be second in boot sequence to your existing hard disk drive uh, that's built onto the in a slot underneath the computer. And um, as a secondary drive, it will already almost start working. Now it depends on if you've got a brand new drive, it's probably not formatted yet. If it was formatted, Windows will have already recognized it and it'll be a new drive. Now if it's not formatted, if it's a brand new drive like mine was, you basically load Windows 7, then go to the control panel, then access system and security. Then under administrative tools, there will be an option that says create and format hard disk partitions. Basically, just go in there, it'll recognize the new drive, it'll say, I noticed, you know, this thing hasn't been um, set up yet. And then you basically use the defaults, and you can ch select your own volume ID, like say SSD, if you want to, to show up with the name. Um, and then it, you can even change the drive letter if you like. Now, if you want to use a secondary drive, it's just that easy. Now, if you actually want to migrate from your existing hard disk drive to your solid state drive, it's a whole different story. Uh, it takes a lot more work to migrate Windows and make Windows functional as a bootable device on the other drive, especially if you're going from a larger hard disk drive to a smaller solid disk drive. Uh, that's a whole different discussion. Um, but if you, once you do get it migrated, if you want to make it the primary, you can actually make the Ultra Bay come first in the boot sequence. Just basically, again, go back to your BIOS menu with F1 when the computer starts. And you can go over to the Devices menu and under there's something that says Boot. And under the boot sequence, you can just plus and minus to change the order to put this one first. Uh, but one of the things I wasn't clear, at least as far as the W520 was concerned, was whether or not the Ultra Bay would really work as SATA 3. That's the 6 gigabit per second. I believe the built-in one can. This one wasn't quite clear if it would really work as SATA 3 or just downgrade to run at the SATA 2 3 gigabit per second speed. I installed a 6 gigabit per second SATA 3 drive and I'm going to eventually swap out for the internal one, make that the, so the solid state drive, and then I'm going to move the one from inside the computer into the bay as my secondary drive. So I'm really happy with it. Uh, you really can't be unhappy with it. It works just as good as any other bay. The only drawback to the bay itself was the fact that it needed rubber rails. Um, other than the rubber rails, it's as good as you'd expect. It would have been not really nice if it would just come with the rubber rails that you might need if you, like me, just bought a solid state drive um, off of Amazon. Thanks for watching the review.